You're never gonna make it, you're not good enough There's a million other people with the same stuff You really think you're different, man, you must be kidding Think you're gonna hit it, but you just don't get it It's impossible, it's not probable, you're responsible Too many What's up, Unstoppable Squad? Today, we have another NXT results for you guys Under yellow lights for you guys Under the gold brand for NXT NXT was presented a night that would test its key players Mustafa Ali teamed up with NXT North American Champion Wesley and Tyler Bate to test the resolve of Sism, including giving Joe Gacy one last chance to prove his value. Uh, Dragunov stepped up to a motivated Baron Corbin while Braun Breaker watched on following his attack on the Caesar last week. Breaker also promised a follow-up to his challenge to the WWE World Heavyweight Champion Seth freaking Rollins. The number one contender to the NXT Women's Champion the Thea Hale would face her biggest test in a match with Cora Jade. Roxana or Roxanne Perez looked for revenge against Tatum Axley. This was also only the foundation of an episode that would continue a chaotic period in NXT. So next we have Wesley, Tyler Bate, and Mustafa Ali versus Sism. After a messy fin final sequence in which Joe Gacy nearly pinned Wesley, Tyler Bate ran into a to ran into knockout Jagger Reed with the Tyler Driver 98 to win. Uh, as always, Sism perform at a high level in the ring no matter how much the gimmick cannot get over. Reed and Rip Follower sold well for the babyface team. And Gacy got a little credibility with a near win. If Sism do not drastically change after this loss, the group will have nothing left to bring to the main roster despite the talent involved. Mustafa Ali was the t was the star to was the star of the match, sorry. Working as though he hasn't had a real opportunity in years. He looked near unstoppable. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and he picked up his second win in NXT as he returned. The longer he stays in NXT, the more likely it is that he dethrones the NXT North American Champion, Wesley Lee. Wesley Lee will first need to beat Bait, who is a phenomenal performer in his own right, which Mustafa Ali will be the special guest referee in that match. I think we'll be probably be saying that in this results here or later on during the results or they won't say it. But anyways, Bait... Lee and Mustafa Ali defeat Sism by pinfall. Grade B+. Plus. A brawl broke out before the bell. Once it calmed, Ali took to the ring and was welcomed by the crowd with a Prince Ali chant. Lame. He is a top guy to the NXT crowd. Mustafa Ali is nothing. He's just... Get a life, kid. I agree with Brock Lesnar. He needs to get a life. Lee, Bate, and Ali hit a triple bop and bang, followed by <coughs> simulatedness dives onto their opponent <coughs> on the outside. They showed criticism. No, chemistry, sorry. As an oddball trio. 
reduct the 450 splash uh, and sent Ali hard into the turnbuckle. The veteran cell on his impact made it look vicious. The referee did not see bait tag in after kicked follower into him. And Sism nearly beat Lee with a swing into a power bomb. However, a second referee stopped it. I hate these stupid second referees. I hate when they do that with a second referee bullcrap. It's stupid. Why can't we just have the original referee? I understand he's down, but he's going to be down for pretty much a little bit. Oh, well, we have to. He's going to be down for the rest of the match. Oh, well. It ain't, my, it ain't our problem. It's the goddamn referees. They're so freaking fragile. Backstage, Ali convinced... Okay, here we go. <clears throat> Ali to convinced Lee to defend against Bate next week with him as a special ref guest or referee to guarantee a fair result. Ali has a plan forming. I wonder what that could be. Could he turn on Tyler Bate or cost Wes Lee? Who knows? Maybe he's going to have Tyler Bate lose and so he can face Tyler uh, Wesley Lee. Who knows? <clears throat> Seth Rollins agrees to world title match next week against Braun Breaker. Dragunov tried, Dragunov tried to rush the ring after Braun Breaker arrived, but officials pulled him off or pulled him back. Seth Rollins interrupted on the Titan Tron and agreed to a match next week in NXT for his World Heavyweight Championship. Last week's challenge was a big deal and confirming it will happen. Give NXT a must-see match next Tuesday. It's just a shame that the Visionary could not appear in person to answer the challenge. Well, it ain't a shame. He had a match last night, or on Monday. Of course he can't, can't appear. He can't appear at NXT. He might have been at a house show. Would you expect him to go to a, be booked at a house show and then show up on NXT? No, that's, he can't do that. He's booked on a house show. Come on now. Use your brain, whoever wrote this. <clears throat> it's a shame that blah, 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 not appear in person to answer, to answer the challenge instead of sending a video. <clears throat> wah, wah, wah. That's all I hear about you from you people that write these freaking things. You guys don't make any sense anyway. Given the C Caesar in the room, Breaker will not win. Of course he ain't going to win. However, he can prove he is ready for the big time. No, he... If he was ready, he would have been ready to have been called up way longer, a long time ago. When the next call-ups from NXT happen, he ain't gonna be ready. C+, plus, your grade. The crowd sang Rollins' theme without promoting even while Breaker's music was still playing. Shawn Michaels announced that the next two weeks would be a two-week event next NXT Gold Rush. The first main event would be Rollins vs. Breaker, and the second will be Carmelo Hayes defending against the winner of Bar Baron Corbin vs. Dragon Nov. Cora Jade vs. Thea Hale with Duke Hudson. Cora Jade tried to hurt the uh, hail with a, her kendo stick, but the referee took it away from her. While the official was distracted, Dana Brooke sent Jade into the steel steps. Of course, Dana Brooke would do that. She looks like she's a heel again. Um, this set up Hale to lock in a Camaro lock to force a submission. This match did not get nearly enough time to sell its importance. Of course not, because of Dana Brooke. 
interfering, duh. Hale picked up a empathetic submission win with help of, from Dana Brooke. Of course, like I said, but this contest should have allowed fans a stronger view. No, it is what it is, dude, of what she can do in the ring. Well, she will when she face Dana Brooke now. Duh. Tiffany Stratton, I wish you guys would add into that. It's like, she will prove herself a stronger view when she faced Dana Brooke. That would make more sense. Tiffany Stratton will be Hale's ultimate test. Though, it will also be an important match for the NXT Women's Champion. She must prove she can build up young talent rather than just beat them. This is an intentional role for NXT title holders. The generation of Jade losing by submission in four minutes, no matter the circumstances, is a step back. Well, like I said, she's going to be facing Dana Brooke. So, Brooke may be around to ultimately put her over. But NXT has played a dangerous game with a stop and start booking. Well, get used to it. It's going to happen. It's w It's wrestling. It's going to happen, buddy. Hell defeat Jade by submission. Grade D. Drew Gulak and Charlie Dempsey taunted Hale about poor techni technique in the Battle Royale. Hudson called... Andre Chase again, begging him to return. NXT showed a hype package for Brooke. Who cares? And she spoke in an interview about making the most of any opportunity. Jade slapped Brooke before she headed to the ring. Jade added a purple streak to her hair, which fitted her presentation well, I wish, you know, with the with the interviews and the promos, I wish they would add in what they were saying, you know, because I know exactly what they were saying and stuff, but apparently they're not going to add it in. Yes, I could add it in, but, you know, yeah. Some, some of it I can remember, some of it I can't. Jade added a purple streak to her hair. Okay. Gulak and Dempsey came out to clap for Hale after her submission win. Woohoo! Good for you. Nobody cares. Stratton versus Hale was announced for two weeks at NXT Gold Rush. Stratton told her number one contender that her underdog story would end soon. Heritage Cup or Mensha on behalf of Nomar Dar versus Nathan. Fraser. I don't know why Nomar Dar is not wrestling when he's, uh, if this is for the Heritage Cup in the winner. If this guy loses for Nomar Dar, right? Nomar Dar is going to be pissed. Nomar Dar announced that he was attacked by Nathan Fraser backstage and would need OR, OR Mensha to step in to fight for his honor instead. Yeah, but it, it, he didn't win. You won. If you got attacked, there's people that get attacked and, and then they show up to wrestle. Come on now. Even in a video game. Come on now. After more cheap tactics from Mita 4... Valentina Ferrazzo or Ferraz and Ulysses uh, Leon took out Lash Legend and Jackara Jackson. This set up Fraser to win off a Phoenix Splash and become and become the new NXT Heritage Cup champion. Of course, look who cost him the over. Now, Nomar Dar will be pissed. It probably is pissed. I would be too. 
Um, nice to see, finally, it is nice to finally see Mensha wrestling fully in an NXT ring again. However, it was a shame that the brand rushed a concept that should guarantee a longer match. Like, again, it don't matter. Uh, it's still got time, but with messy pacing. Dar's injury, assuming it's a legitimate. No, it's not. It's not legitimate. It's just fake. He got attacked. It's a storyline. Demanded Fraser's win. But it was un... Avoidable. Hopefully, this is the chance the new Heritage Cup champion needed to break out. If they wanted to have the champion, the new champion, to be broke out, he should have never attacked Nomar Dar and should have fought Nomar Dar one on one in a fair match. I'm sorry. The Mita Four immediately lost steam as a stable here. But Mensha could not continue defending on behalf of the Scottish Supernova. The Heritage Cup will find new life with a hungry young superstar defending it regularly. Well, Nomar Dahar was doing the same thing too, dumb idiots. Fraser defeats Mensha. Every time when I did results for... NXT, that's all I remember. Fraser defeats Mensha by a score of 2-1 to one to become the NXT, the new NXT Heritage Cup champion, grade B-. minus. Dark picked up the first fall with a surprise roll-up. You mean the other guy near the end of the first round? You mean the other guy that was there for Dar? A distraction from Jackson allowed Legend to grab Fraser and set up a spinning corner heel kick to pick up his first fall in the second round. Fraser nearly took the win off a super kick corner or counter to a springboard moonsault in the in round three, but Mensha kicked out just before time expired. Time was. Probably supposed to run out before three, but the timing was off. Well, it's going to happen. Mensha ducked a first Phoenix Splash and then turned a second attempt into a German suplex. This was his last big shot at winning. Dabacado, or Dabacado versus Exum and Scripps. Axum and Scripps looked like a cohesive team together, taking down Dabakata with each move they could land. Scripps hit a diving moonsault followed by Axum's gold ratio to win. After the victory, Humberto Carrillo and Angelo Angel Garza laid out the superhero team. Um, this was terrible booking once again. It's not terrible booking. You're probably pissed. You're upset the face team got beat up. Come on now. The once dominated monster has lost all of his heat in back to back losses. Well, because, you know, a monster's got to look strong in losing. Look at Baron Corbin. He was he was a monster. And he's losing. Losing, losing, losing. He's a he was like Brian Myers. Kerr Hawkins. If Kato had beaten Scripps last week, this would have not been a da as damaging. Now though, he looks like a chump. Once again, the heat of the win was Tarnished by a super kick attack or a surprise attack. This time, Los Lotharos took the shot. Humberto and Angel needed the this fresh start, 
but it had but it should have been set up on a different week as Axum and Scripps are barely a team yet. Whatever, it doesn't matter. Go with it. Sorry, I'm yes, I'm having a bad day. I had a bad day at work, but this guy just doesn't it's just being an idiot. The superheroes have some unique chemistry to explore and could be a force in the tag team division. Even P even Immortal Spades would agree with me. He will be here for tomorrow for um, AEW. With the time. The zero-sum booking it is hurting rather than helping. Even if Immortal Spades was here... He would agree with me right here, right now, that they're just being completely... He would understand why I'm being pissed off right here with this guy. Axum and Scripps defeat Kato by pinfall. Before... And guys, when I used to do wrestling results on our old channel, right? Um, I would get pissed off by reading some of this, too. Because these people would make no sense... Or just be like, dude, come on. Use your brain. Grade D minus. I actually caught Scripps on the ground and flipped him over his head. And then over the ropes onto Cotto outside. NXT showed a vintage for Lyra Valkyrie. Who cares? In the locker room. JC Jane. Was not impressed while Electra Lopez and Lala Vice agreed to work together. Dijak taunted Von w Wagner about his lack of wins. But Mr. Stone stood up for him. The big man decided he would explain his childhood to Stone soon. At risk and off. Versus Malik Blade. Edris Enoff and Malik Blade went to war to get closer as a team. And the latter stole the pinfall victory with a small package. The teammates hugged it out after Enoff confirmed he knew Blade's birth date. Who cares? Good for him. Booker T announced that Enoff and Blade, Josh Briggs, and Brooks, Jensen, and Hank Walker, and Tank Ledger would fight in a triple threat next week. Why didn't you just say versus, 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 versus? Where the winners would face Gallus, the... Following week, a brawl broke out between the comp competitors. These series of sing singles matches between the tag team partners have worked well to paid run time for NXT while keeping the tag team division relevant. However, none of the matches have had enough time. This barely got going before Blade stole a fast one. Since Enoff has often been portrayed as a high, higher level competitor of the a team, Blade's win was a smart way to give him a rub. Briggs and Jensen are still the only team with a real shot to dethrone Gallus. But anyone can win next week to set up a fun one-offs clash. Blade defeated Enoff by pinfall. Grade C minus. Both Briggs and Jensen, as well as Walker and Ledge uh, Legger uh, came out to cheer on the teammates. Woohoo! Enoff missed, missed a somersault sent on to the floor, then Took one from Blade. Lost Lo Lost Lorados. I don't know how to pronounce them. Watched the uh, brawl and told the world they, uh, they wanted to fight the best. 
chaining stacks, Lorenzo looked over evidence, convinced Gallus caused Tony D'Angelo's arrest. Pretty much probably did. He promised to show the Don he was more the, than the underboss. Next, we have Roxanne Perez versus Tatum Paxley. Tatum Paxley tried every shortcut against Roxanne Perez, but it only seemed to motivate the prodigy. Paxley reversed Pop Rocks into a roll-up, but Perez reversed it into a pin-off of her own for a three count. Afterward, Perez called out Davenport and promised to make her pay. These two tried hard to make this more than a squash, but you can only do so much with three, mi three minutes. It was back and forth action in which the prodigy was still far too much for Paxley. The post-match promo from Perez continues to show her primary weakness as a performer, but she spoke with a confrontation uh, to sell a big match to come. Perez versus Dan Davenport is the future top woman's bout, but both still have room to grow for the time being. It will be a test to help both improve as character workers. Perez defeats Paxley by pinfall. Blair. Oh, sorry. I was reading something. Blair Davenport talked about why she attacked Nikita Lyons. Wendy Cho and Sol Roko, Ruka striking fear into the hearts of the locker room. Perez showed her rage battering Paxley with forearms before sending her outside for a suicide dive. Damon Kemp harassed the referee's locker room about his loss to Eddie Thorpe. Thorpe arrived and said that he would face Kemp in any kind of match. Gigi Dolan and Fallen Henley bonded over their hatred of Kiana James. Number one contender Baron Corbin versus Dragonov. Even with injured ribs, Dragonov had Baron Corbin on the ropes. Okay, whoopie doo. A timely distraction from Braun Breaker set up the Caesar of the end of days, which sealed the win. Afterward, Carmelo Hayes took out the lone wolf and stood tall. This had a chance to be special, but the two never hit the top gear that the Caesar reaches in his best performances. Dragunov selling the rib injury did slow him down. Of course, it's going to slow him down. But Corbin did not seem to have an interest in pushing the pace at all. It was a fine main event, but hardly the best part of the program. Corbin will need to, stop, to step up his game against Melo in two weeks. This could be make or break time for him. It was disappointing to end this match with a messy interference angle. When Breaker should be focusing on Seth Rollins. Hopefully Breaker and Dragunov will clash soon. If they are going to ruin each other's matches each week until then. Corbin defeats Dragunov by pinfall to become the new number one contender to NXT Championship. Grade C+. Before the main event, NXT showed a video package for Lucien Price and Bronco Niyama, the newest tag team. Dragunov ripped off Corbin's shirt, whoopie doo, early and began battering him with chest chops, okay. The lone wolf caught 
the Caesar on the Ronald's table and repeatedly smacked his bandaged ribs and then slammed him into the apron. Dragunov hit a diving knee drop into a diving senton, but the impact on his ribs slowed him down. Uh, he followed up with a DDT delayed vertical and low forearm smash, and only Breaker's interference could save Corbin. Overall show. The pieces of the puzzle have not come together in recent weeks as a car, as a good card fell short of expectations. Only opener lived up to the expectations. Mustafa Ali feels different in NXT, and he is telling an interesting slow build story with Wesley that he that has been tough to predict. Tyler Bay and Lee, as well as Sislam, continue to steal the show every week in the ring. However, Corbin, Baron Corbin has yet to show his value at the same level. His run could be ending in two weeks, but he has not elevated Trick Williams or Dragunov so far. Actually, he has made them worse. The tag team division is packed with the talent and will have some good weeks to come despite of a lack of TV time this past month. The women's division is also moving slowly but has elevated new names at the same time. What do you expect, dude? NXT's the next top competitors to move in to the brand. They're going to be moving slow. It's going to be moving slow. And stuff. Come on now. While the direction of NXT is still positive. The individual shows are following into a familiar pattern. Sacrificing match time for more variety. At least one bout. Malik Blade and Enderus Enoff. Or... Axum and Scripps versus Davocada could have been cut to elevate another Thea Hale versus Cora Jade or Roxanne Perez versus Tatum Paxley on the show. Luckily, NXT Gold Rush has a stellar card for both weeks that should make up for a slow start to June. And Practical, it would make no sense to rush any of the title matches, which could be real show stealers. Overall, grade D. Anyways, thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comments below what you thought of NXT. This is my thoughts and results on NXT. I'll be back with more results in hell. Hell. I might bring um, some news today. We'll see. Um, I, there was a few good st stories last night, but too bad I couldn't do it because I was at work. But anyways, Unstoppable Squad, thank you guys for watching. I'm Unstoppable, and I'll see you guys in results tomorrow morning. And also see you guys in the news. And I'm out. Hey everybody, it's your boy Skiz here. And if you don't subscribe to, to Buan and the Unstoppable Denominator, then you are a toothy, bumfuck, pussy-ass bitch motherfucker. <laughs>